Hey guys, just wanted to do my review of Get Out, a new horror film written and directed by Jordan Peele, one half of Key and Peele, starring Daniel Kaluuya from Sicario, Ashley Williams from Girls, um, Bradley Whitford, Catherine Keener from 40 Year from 40 Year Old Virgin, as well as as well as well as Caleb Landry Jones who played. Banshee in X-Men First Class. So basically, um, Daniel and Ashley play this couple named Chris and Rose who are going up to going up to the latter's fam going up to the latter's ha um, visit the latter's family for the weekend and introduce. They've been dating for like five months, and they can and she wants and Rose wants to introduce um, Chris to um, her mother and father, Dean and Missy, and, and her brother. Um, Jeremy and base and basic and you know he's worried because um the fam he, the family's because he's worried about because she never told him that Chris was black that's gonna be awkward for them but she insists that they're just aw awkward and on him not like racist conservative and even when they go and even when they finally go up to um, visit them it just comes across as I mean, even they do come across as very like innocently insensitive, in, like saying thing, like Dean saying things like, "Oh, I would have, oh, I thought Obama, Barack Obama was the best president. I would have voted for him for a third term if I could have." And and he's saying things like, "How long has this been going on? This thing." And then it gets, and then of course, and then of course, it like just gets worse. And then of course, it gets worse when they have like a whole like um, function where they invite all the neighbors over and they're all like older white folks and different other people are coming up to them saying, "Oh, do you like golf? Oh, we love Tiger Woods." And like another woman's like feeling up his feeling up his chest and his biceps and saying like, "Hey, Rose, is it better with him?" And then like another, and then they even have like a, an Asian dude to make sure it doesn't feel like reverse racism towards white people, where it's just. Like, hey, Chris, you know the you know black you know black. You think it's outdated? Do you think like African American is more politically correct? And of course, like Rose is getting agitated, and Chris is like, "Well, fuck, it must be Tuesday," and he's to, and it's pretty much like the whole weekend is like playing out just, just like any black person who would be in that situation would have expected it to play out if they're in like a wash but upper class community. But they and it also added insults to injury that they have that the um, Rose's family has a you know a, a maid and like a groundskeeper both are black and they're and Dean's trying to assist like oh they're just trying to take care of my parents before they passed away and we didn't have the you know the we didn't have the heart to let them go and they both come across it even when you're like interacting with um, the groundskeeper and the maid. Um, they both come across as, like, increasingly, like, you know, like, they're kind of in a trance, almost kind of, like, step for wives esque and they also just, and he just kind of feels like something's up, and he has, like, his best friend who keeps telling him, he's like, you know, he's, you know, it's crazy to go up to a white girl, go up to, like, a white girl's family's house, like, they're, is not, is it gonna be bad news, and he's the one rambling about, oh, and when he finds out that, um, black people have been disappearing in in that neighborhood, including a mutual acquaintance of theirs named Andre. He's somebody who, he has, like, the hat. He's probably, if you watch the trailer, he has, like, the hat, and he's the one where it's, like, he gets like, the flash photography start, causes his nose to start bleeding, and he's like, yelling at Chris, you know, get out. And basically, it's... I mean, the thing is, is that I know, like, basically, this has like last time I checked, has a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes, but it also has, but it has like a six out of ten on um, IMDb. I think the pe reason for that is that people are misinterpreting this film as like reverse racism, and it's basically it's like a horror film with satire. And Jordan Peele's intentions were that it's not that you know people who like try to talk to Chris that the way they are are just trying to be like. Are just are like intentionally racist. They're just tr they're just basically just more like innocently insensitive and how they try to and how they try to like talk to, and they, how they come how they come across as like condescending and patronizing. They're just trying to be welcoming. 
I mean, personally, from my experience, I feel like that can be argued, but that's basically, you know, those are the words from Jordan Peele in an interview I watched um, that was his intention of the movie. And it's hard to talk about this without going into spoilers. I will go into spoilers later, and I will put a um, timestamp in the description for you to jump to the spoiler, you were to skip over the spoilers right to the end. Um, so... Basically, he finds out is like first is like first is like at first like I'm just gonna like on the edge of my seat and I'm like this is like the most uncomfortable I've been. This is the second. This is uh, like the most uncomfortable I've been to watching a kind of scenario like this. Second to being pulled over by the police, and this is basically. And it turns out that you know you think like oh because of um um Missy who's like a who's like a psychiatrist and uses hypnotism. And, like, she's getting pissed, and he's pissed at Chris for, like, sm being a smoker and smoking his from his daughter, that he's, like, using this, that he's using, like, hypnosis to, um, using a spoon in a teacup to create sounds where it, it forces him to relive, like, a painful memory, a painful memory of his childhood, and he uses that to basically put him, trap him inside, and it basically uses that to, like, manipulate him, and the more he finds out about this, the more he, it's, like, the intention is like far more horrifying than you know from what I initially thought. Where it's like there's somehow like this is a family that's trying to like bring back. Like, they're basically you know in practicing slavery through like the hypnosis. Um, but basically, but it's a little more sinister than that, and it takes some twists and turns that I feel like it makes with the racial satire and the turns it takes with the with um. This movie it makes is what makes it very unique, at as a horror film as I, why I urge you to go and see this. And this is probably where we're gonna start getting into the spoilers. So if you don't want don't want it to be spoiled, I'm just gonna give you a minute to just not you know probably just hit the timestamp and skip over towards the end of it. So basically, he finds out that um. That he first is like he's talking to his girlfriend and saying that he's not comfortable there and, and he wants to make an excuse to leave. And Dean is having an auction in which they have a picture of Chris and and they're trying to like auction him off to um, different different neighbors. And you're not sure what the intentions are. And Stephen Rue plays a an artist who's gone blind who wins the wins the bid. And it turns out that. Um, Dean's a neurosurgeon, and I, Dean's a neurosurgeon, and basically, um, Missy being a psychiatrist, basically the whole thing is that they she uses her hypnosis to hypnotize black people and trap them inside their own subconscious and manipulate them into some kind of like eugenicist kind of plot in which um, Dean will whoever like win, will Dean will like, um, like the like the neighbors they want to kind of like have like ex I guess like not like immortality but extended lifespan so basically they the people who the black people who are disappearing are being used as hosts in which uh, Dean removes the brains of the black people and replaces them with the host of the white neighbors who bids on them and a sliver of the um host subconscious is still trapped inside and the only way they have like any influence of control is through um you know, the flash photography that um, Chris is using to get them, set them free, but they are free, but the, but I guess it's like only like temporary, it's only like somewhat temporary, and they're kind of like trapped inside their minds and kind of like passengers in their own bodies. Similar to how like, you know, in being John Malkovich, um, people like are kind of like passengers inside his, in his body unless they exert some kind of control after a while. So, at first, like you know, starts noticing weird things, like you know, his phone keeps getting up, keep con keeps constantly getting unplugged, and you know, losing, you know, and his batter, and the, his battery dies just in an attempt to like, keep him from contacting anybody for what's going on. But his friend who works at the TSA suspects that you know, like they said, they had a mutual friend named Andre who who's gone missing, and he was the other black people who have gone missing, and. Chris's fears are confirmed when um, Chris and Rose are trying to like leave the house, 
she he goes into the closet and finds pictures of at first she at first Chris thinks like he's like the first black boyfriend that she first black person that she's dated. And turns out Rose is basically and basically I looked at the pictures and I'm just like like holy crap, like holy crap, holy crap, holy crap. She's the honey trap. She's the honey trap. The family is using their daughter as a honey trap because she just finds several pictures of of other black people she's dated and brought to the house, including pictures with the groundskeeper, with the maid Regina and the groundskeeper, and basically they're being surrounded, and basically he's trying to leave, he's being surrounded by um, Dean, Missy, and Jeremy, and Rose can't find the keys, and based, and he's not... He's not an idiot. No, Chris is not an idiot. He's getting like pissed at Rose, saying like, "Rose, give me the keys." And then of course she, and of course is like, "Okay, is she in on it? Is she being like brain? Is she being like manipulated or like brain hypnotized into like kind of being in, on, being in on this, but not being like self aware? Kind of like the LMD May on Agents of Shield." But then of course she grabs the keys and saying like, "You know, I can't give you these." I'm like, holy crap, I did not see that coming. And and basically, he's just, like, trapped down in, like, their basement, like, down the basement of, like, a pool table in their study room. And Stephen Root and basically the grand, Rose's grandfather explaining on television set, like, what they're doing. And, and Chris is asking questions, like, why us? Why black people? And he says... Oh, we couldn't care what you look like. We just want to go with what's fat. We just want to go with what's fashionable, what's trending, and presumably it's just because of you know the pigmentation of their skin causes like slowed aging in black people, and they're naturally more athletic, and they're better in bed, and us and more artistic. We still comes across as racist, even though they insist that they don't care. But it's almost like an admiration, even though some twisted admiration for them. But they're really kind of cool thing about, but the really kind of cool thing about it is this when you think that every time he's like watching the TV and sees an image of the the spoon spinning and making the sounds in the teapot sp spinning, like stirring the tea and he passes out you realize that when he was like digging his fingers into the armrest of his chair that he was um, tied to, he was pulling stuffing out of it and then when Jeremy comes to get him for brain surgery to put his brain inside Stephen Root's body, it turns out he used the stuffing his earplugs. He was able to bludgeon Jeremy with bludgeon Jeremy with the uh, with the ball. He's able to take a um, a deer head, which is deer head, and impale and impale and impale um, Dean in the neck with the antlers. He was able to fight his. He was able to fight his way. He was basically able to fight his way and like stab, stab Missy. Then he was able, and then of course he had to struggle multiple times against Jeremy again. Where first they kept like closing the door and try to put him in like a sleeper hole, in the same way he did to Andre at the beginning of the movie. But he was able to calculate. But the cool thing is he was able to calculate that basically by reaching for the door again, the Jeremy's going to try to kick the door closed. So that's where he uses the opportunity to stab. So when that happens, he uses the opportunity to like stab um, Jeremy in the leg and just stop. Just keep like just stomping on his head until he like grabs his keys and steals his car and tries to call nine one one. But because of the childhood trauma that he had, which it turns out is that his mom. His mom's death, in which uh, died when he was eleven, in which um, he called. You know, I guess like he called nine one one, or he didn't, or he felt like he, or he, like he blamed himself for the death because he called, or like he called nine one one. He was like watching TV and didn't do anything. He didn't realize like you know how how much you know how she was dying. And I felt like he could have gone and helped look for her. And so when he hits um, Regina with the car, is like. Is that childhood memory and that kind of hypnosis of the results from Missy that caused him to go back for Regina, even though she's kind of brainwashed, and then you find, and then when Ro, and then when Rose comes after um, Chris with a shotgun, he's just like, "Grandma," and I'm just like, "Holy!" But it's just like. They seem in like such a trance that you just seem it just seems kinda of off it and like they're not acting normally. It doesn't seem like you know, they're trying you know, these are like people inhabiting 
in black people's bodies. And Andre is like was of course obviously another victim of that. Like somebody else was, you know, some like white person was inhabiting his body because of like you know his dress and his mannerisms. But it didn't seem like they were actually like normal people. Like I don't know. That's just this is something I noticed. But um, and then of course like she. And then, of course, like, quote-unquote, Regina wakes up and, like, screaming at Chris, like, you ruined our fam- you ruined our family and caused him to crash into a tree. And then, of course, Rose comes after him with, uh, with a shotgun. And then, like, the grandfather, who's apparently in the groundskeeper's body, um, like, he's able to, like, tackle him until Chris uses his cell phone to, like, snap, you know, have his original host regain consciousness and shoot Rose. And then he just shoots himself with a gun to end his suffering, and not and not have and not have um, the grandfather regain control of his body. And then when he tries to choke out, um, and when Chris tries to choke out, ro- choke Rose to death while she's like bleeding out from the gunshot wound, he realizes he can't bring himself to actually kill her. And then a TSA, and then of course a cop car comes by and it seems like oh, oh, the white woman's been shot and you know, um. Chris has the gun, and he puts his hands up, and then he realizes it's his friend who was warning him about the disappearances and was actually trying to go to the other TSA agents about his um, what was happening to him, realizing that he was missing, and and, and basically Rose tried to honey honey trap him in the same thing and realized that he she was in on it. He basically just comes to his rescue, comes to his rescue, and they kind of just drive off and just leave her to die. So... I mean that. I mean that was pretty much like the end of the movie. He doesn't say like whether he goes to the authorities about this or you know the. But I guess basically the whole. And basically, it's enough to know that the whole thing's resolved. But I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. I was on the edge of my seat. The whole concept was freaky in a great way. I think people people need to go out and see this. And you know, I feel like this was like a very creative, like outside the box horror film with some great um, racial satire. And again, I don't think this was necessarily like a case of reverse racism, it was just more of, um, basically just him just trying to, like, send a message and without, send a mess, um, Jordan Peele just trying to send a message and have some side satire in it, in the same way he did on Key and Peele without, and Keanu, without having, you know, without any kind of malice to it, and I hope you guys need to go out and see it, I hope more people go out and see this, um, if you have seen this movie, what do you guys think about it? Um, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. I will talk to you guys soon with my DC Week review as well as my review of some other movies I've seen um, in the last couple of weeks. Take care. Bye-bye.